Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the World of AI. In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing a quite new remarkable project, which is Panda GPT. Now, Panda GPT is an advanced AI model that has been developed by a couple of researchers, and it possesses the ability to both see, hear, as well as making it a little bit more versatile by utilizing a multi model instruction following system. Now, it has been designed to handle, handle various complex tasks including generating detailed descriptions of images creating stories based off of videos as well as providing answers to questions related to an audio input now the reason why i'm covering these multi-modality type of like applications is because there's some sort of like capability that one of these projects have that the other ones don't in this case we can see that it's able to handle various types of complex tasks which a lot of these other multi-modal projects are able to do but in this case it has a versatility in which you're able to process as well as handle various complex like types of outputs for a video now you're able to create stories based off of a video input now you can do this with different types of applications still but in this case you're able to do it with a further type of capability and this is something that i'll be showcasing in this video now one of the remarkable features of panda gpt is its capability to process multiple modalities simultaneously now it's able to do this by naturally combining their actual information from each of the modalities to create that output simultaneously for instance you're able to do this by accomplishing a connection between a visual appearance of an object as well as corresponding it with the sound and we've seen this with many different projects but for this case we're able to see that it's able to do it with different types of capabilities in different outputs and inputs which makes this project a little bit better as well as puts it ahead compared to other types of projects that are trying to accomplish the same type of thing. Now, the underlying architecture of Panda GPT is the fusion of two components, the multi-modal encoders from ImageBind, as well as the large language models, which is used in this actual application, which is Vicuna. Now, by leveraging the strengths of both systems, what Panda GPT achieves is an impressive cross-modal ability across six different modalities, namely text, image, video, audio depth thermal as well as imu which is a different type of measurement unit now it's important to note that panda gpt's training is primarily focused on aligned image text pairs and this is thanks to the shared embedding space that is provided by imagebind which is meta's actual project now this alignment basically allows this model to understand the relationships between the textual and visual elements more efficiently and effectively now, you might be wondering, what is the ultimate goal of Panda GPT? Well, it's to serve as a foundational step towards the development of artificial general intelligence. Now, that can perceive, comprehend inputs, as well as work across various modalities, which can mirror the like nature of human perception. And this is something that many type, different types of projects are trying to accomplish. And this is something that we can see with Panda GPT. Now, by extending its capabilities beyond the text-based tasks, as well as incorporating visual and like audio information, what Panda GPT can do and demonstrate is that it's able to potentially build AI systems that can truly understand and interact in the world for a lot of different complex tasks, as well as helping you with menial tasks that could basically effectively help you accomplish many things in your day-to-day -day tasks now in today's video we're going to be going a little bit more in depth as to what this actual project can do talking a little bit about the features how you can actually play around with it as well as going more depth of some of the limitations that this project has so with that thought let's get right into the video Firstly guys, if you guys haven't actually followed my Twitter page, please do so because I'm always continuously posting live updates on AI news over here. So if you do get a chance, please give this a follow. If you guys aren't subscribed, please do so guys if, as I'm continuously posting the latest AI videos on this channel. Turn on the notification bell, like this video, comment anything you want to see in the future uploads. And if you guys haven't seen any of my previous videos, I highly recommend that you do guys because there's a lot of content and a lot of value that you will definitely benefit from. So definitely give this a try and check out any of the videos that I've posted over here. And with that, let's get right into the video. Now, 
before I actually get into the examples as well as getting more in detail for the actual application, I want to illustrate the actual flowchart of this application. Now, I'll leave all the links in the description below so you can get a better idea. But in this figure, we can see that it illustrates the architecture of Panda GPT and it highlights the specific components that are being trained during the training process. Now, in this figure, we can see that it depicts the training setup for Panda GPT and it indicates which parts of the model undergo training while keeping other parameters frozen. Now, as we talked about at the start, it utilizes the large language model of Vicuna. Now, in Panda GPT, we talked about that there's two components that are utilized. Firstly, is the image bind, and secondly, is Vicuna. Now, image bind represents the multimodal encoders, which are responsible for processing the visual as well as the uh, like the audio inputs. And we can see that over here. And Basically, they're responsible for processing these two inputs while the Vicuna large language model consists of basic like use cases for generating text-based outputs. And both of these combined are able to give you the best outputs that are used for basic inputs of prompts. Now, the dashed boxes, which we can see over here, are basically highlighting the portions of the model that undergo the training process. And this like specifically in this case a it's a linear like projection matrix and additionally it utilizes LoRa, which is a linear scaled relevance based attention and what it does is that it utilizes the weights from LoRa as a trainable parameter that indicates the dashed like boxes in this flowchart now by freezing the parameters of image bind as well as vicuna it means that the weights can remain fixed and it's unchanged during the whole training process now this decision is made to ensure that the model is primarily focusing on the training of the linear projection matrix as well as, as well as like utilizing laura's weights as there's other components that need to actually adapt and learn from the data and by training only specific parts of the model it basically allows for more targeted and efficient training so this is by keeping the majority of the model frozen and basically utilizing the pre-trained knowledge and capabilities of ImageBind as well as Vicuna to have it retained so that it's able to train the components that can be fine-tuned to improve the model's performance. And that's basically how this whole flowchart of Panda GPT operates. Now, let's get into the next focus where we're gonna focus a little bit more about the capabilities. As we talked about at the start, there's a range of capabilities that surpass those of existing multimodal instruction following models. And these are some of the things that we can see that multimodal, or sorry, Panda GPT is able to provide. Firstly, we see that it's able to have a VIN image as well as a video grounded question answering system. And basically, Panda GPT can answer questions related to the content of an image or a video. Now, it can understand the visual information provided and generates an accurate response to queries about the depicted scenes as well as the objects that are provided in the input that relates to the image as well as video encoder. Now, this is basically like able to do that. It's like the Panda GPT is able to do this because of the image mind as well as the encoders that are correlated with that actual application. Secondly, you're able to also have image and video inspired creative writing. Now, Panda GPT has the ability to generate creative and imaginative written content based off of visual stimuli as well as from like images and videos and it can generate stories descriptions narratives inspired off these visual inputs another thing it can do is having visual and audio reasoning now panda gpt can reason and make inferences based off of both visual and audio information it does this by analyzing and understanding the relationships between the visual and audio elements which enables the actual application to provide a comprehensive and a holistic interpretation of what is inputted and lastly we are able to see that you're able to get a multi-modal automatic uh, panda like feature and panda gpt feature and this can basically help it perform in the arithmetic operations involving multi-modalities and it can combine numeric information from like different types of modalities such as like text images audio and so forth to carry out calculations and generate responses that involve like numbers to help you with the reasoning of the input and that's basically some of the capabilities of this actual application and this is what i emphasize at the start of the video guys because you might be wondering i've covered so many different types of 
videos we can see over here there's a multimodal gpt chatbot with the vision we have image mind which focuses on another type of different types of modalities so you might be wondering like why is there so many different types of modalities and this is why guys because each each like capability of uh, an application can help target a certain type of like feature in this case it f focuses on grounding question answering having inspired creative writing from videos which is something that we can't see from other types of applications as well as from their modalities in this case they focus on these types of features and capabilities so that they're able to perfect it in different reasonings as well as use cases so this is why panda gpt is something that we should keep an eye out for now let's get into the next focus where we look at some of the examples of this actual application we can see in this image right here let me just zoom out a little bit but we can see that there's an input of an audio file and it's a dog barking audio file and you ask it the chatbot tell me what this audio is and we can see that there's a description that is outputted from panda gpt which says in the audio a dog is barking loudly possibly due to being excited or startled and we can see that it has some sort of consciousness which makes a good representation of what is happening in the actual audio file so it also has this consciousness feature which provides you a more generative better answer that relates to your human component of the or input and we can see that you can chat with the actual bot but you can go further by saying asking can you guess which what, what might be the reason why dogs in or dogs in the audio start barking and it gives you some of the reasons as to why the dog is barking in this audio file you can also combine images to an audio and ask different types of capabilities from your input prompt you can have different things where you input an image and ask what is happening in the image you can input a video of a superhero and you can ask it who's in the actual video you can do a lot of different things by combining different modalities and having them operate simultaneously and this is what puts Panda gpt at another level guys so definitely play around and check out these examples now let's get into the next focus where we will actually play around with it on the demo that is uploaded on gradio before we actually get into that i'll leave the link for the instruction data set for and a GPT in the description below so you can if you want to like take a look at it or upload it for your own use cases I'll leave this in the link in the description below now to play around with this you're able to do different things and focus on the six different modalities in this case you can upload an image upload an audio file a thermal image as well as a video and you can chat with what is happening in this case let us chat with the actual uh, image of a red or an orange car sorry not a red one i'm not colorblind guys my bad but basically you can input it what is the color of the car and let's submit it it'll take a couple seconds and from this we'll get the answer of what is happening in the image and as we talked about at the start it uses the encoders as well as the large language model to help you understand what is happening in the image now we can see right here the color of the car is orange so in this example when we use the image we're able to talk and chat with the chatbot of panda gpt to see what is happening in the image by utilizing the encoders now in this case let's take a look at the audio file uh, let's see if i can play it let me just turn it down a little bit okay i think it might be a little laggy so once i have it figured out i'll be right back all right guys so i got the audio clip to load Take a listen to this. <laughs> so I just asked it a simple question. What kind of bird is chirping in the audio clip? The bird chirping in the audio clip is a small bird, possibly a sparrow, <laughs> which is quite amazing. Now you can do a lot of different things. You can do thermal images. Oh, shoot. You can upload it over here. We can just use the example over here. What is happening? You can even put videos. In this case, it's the earth that uh, like the globe that is spinning around. You can ask it different questions. I don't know it's taking a little bit longer because i think there's a network issue but we can see there's a 30 second clip and this might take a little bit longer so just keep that in mind when you're trying to use this actual demo because there's a lot of people actually using it because it's trending at the moment and another thing you want to know is that the current demo is using the 7 billion version of panda gpt and this is to the, due to the limitations of computation resources of uploading it on gradio so if you want to use the 13 billion parameter parameter uh, model you can actually refer to the actual project repository and this is quite easy to install 
as you just got to install the prerequisites. You need to install the requirements of this package, which is quite easy. You go copy this code link, copy the link of the code, type in git clone on your, uh, what's it called, command prompt. And once you have that finished, you can start installing the repository onto your desktop. You need to also install PyTorch packages. And then you need to also install image binding coders, which is a checkpoint that you're going to be using for this actual application. You also need to input the pre-trained Vicuna model, which you can see that there's instructions on how to do so. But at this current moment, I think the easiest option you have is utilizing the Gradio demo online as it's much easier and simple to use. You can even upload your own images, which is quite easy. So definitely check this out guys, so you can get a better idea and use case of this project. And it's quite easy to do so. So I hope you found this actual project quite useful and you got some sort of idea of as to what this project is. I definitely see this as quite useful and innovative approach to like taking one model and utilizing it for a lot of different modalities. So it's quite amazing as to what they've done. So I highly recommend that you check this out. And with that thought, guys, thank you so much for watching. Definitely give my Twitter page a follow if you guys haven't already. Subscribe, turn on the notification bell. It would mean the whole world to me, guys, if you guys can like and check out any of my previous videos because there's a lot of content and a lot of value that you will definitely benefit from. So with that thought, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Spread positivity. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace out, fellas.